In any industry, businesses work in an ecosystem of different organizations and authorities, and sometimes working together can be useful. Such projects may go beyond the traditional scope of the business, but they can bear fruit in the long term. But what are these joint projects? How can external relations help your business? And where do you start? Kristina Shingarova, Head of External Relations at Kaspersky, will tell us about it. I'm Kristina Shingareva. I'm the Head of External Relations at Kaspersky. And together with my team, we have been working on raising public awareness about major cyber threats so that now you would all know about them and you would understand what it means. Before, when I just joined Kaspersky, it was quite impossible to read anything in a general media or business publications like the New York Times about, let's say, ransomware attack. Now it is possible. Now we do read it almost every day. And there are two reasons for that. One is that most probably cybersecurity threats became mainstream, so it can happen any day, it can happen to anyone. But the second reason, I think, is because different large organizations started to unite in order to solve and research some cybersecurity issues. And together we can amplify uh, the results of our joint efforts. We can be more vocal and people can hear us, people can understand what it means and people can understand that it is time now to react to cyber threats. What are the biggest win at your work? To start with No More Ransom. This is a project that uh, was launched in 2016. It was launched by four organizations, Europol, the Netherlands Police, uh, Kaspersky and McAfee. And we launched it in order to help victims of ransomware not to pay the ransom to cyber criminals and to get their encrypted data back for free. Our experts, uh, they could find the decryptions uh, to several families of the ransomware. And we understood that we have this expertise, that we're able to give the victims the decryption keys. This is how we got united with the Netherlands police. Also, we assisted them in the investigation. Then we got united with the Europol and with McAfee. And this is how the Normal Ransom project has begun. And now, after five years, we have more than 160 partners all over the globe. And together we help people all over the globe to tackle the problem. So the ransomware is the type of problem which I think cannot be solved just like in one day or there is no universal solution to this. But we try to do it, we try to help people not to pay the ransom. And the second project is the Coalition Against Stockware. To start talking about it, we need to understand what the Stockware is. Uh, to start with the definition. If we go like very basic, we define it as the surveillance, uh, phone surveillance. It's legally available application which can be bought by anyone online. It is usually sold uh, on the facade of parental control or um, anti-thief application, but sometimes it is openly advertised as an application which can help one to understand if somebody's wife if ch is cheating on them. The special thing about it is that due to their legal status, uh, IT security companies cannot flag them as malicious. So we can detect them and we do detect them, but at the same time we cannot block them, we cannot remove them because they are considered not malicious. And to solve this issue we understood that, okay, we need to educate our users, we need to help them better understand what's installed on their phones, because it's usually a phone problem. And for that, we decided to change the notification in our product. So when the product detects stockware and we have the pop-up notification, now it doesn't say some generic information, it says like explicitly what this type of software is capable of so that it can track location, it can track, uh, track text messages, your phone calls, anything. So basically all your activities are 
open to the abuser. So we do this privacy alert, we do this notification and we tackle this problem because it's a tech issue, so we take, uh, tackle it with uh, our tech solutions. After we did it, we received great coverage and with that coverage we also received great feedback from our colleagues from other IT security companies and also from uh, non-governmental organizations that work with victims of domestic violence. And that was really eye-opening to us because we realized that that wasn't just a tech issue, but that was uh, like the issue of abuse, the issue of domestic violence. And we realized, oh my God, like the situation is much, much bigger. We cannot even understand how to tackle it, what the steps should be. So that's why we decided that we need to unite all together. And together with nine other organizations, we uh, created the Coalition Against Stalkerware. It was the end of 2019. And two years later, we now have more than 40 partner organizations from all over the globe. And they include uh, cybersecurity companies, um, academia, uh, service organizations that work with victims of domestic violence. Uh, some law enforcement agencies. We also have Interpol as a supporter of the coalition because it's not only one problem, it, it's like a snowball. We can tackle it from different angles. Inside the coalition, organizations has been divided into several working groups which tackle different types of uh, problems. And one of the projects, which I would also say that is a win, is a tiny check. Uh, Tiny Check tool is a Kaspersky supported uh, open source, so free and openly uh, available tool uh, that was initially created into the response uh, of the request which came from one French organization that worked with victims of domestic violence. The Stockware is really interesting application in these um, terms that it can send out notification to abuser if uh, the scan of the device was performed, or if the stalkerware was detected, or if the stalkerware has been removed, it may, in some cases, even escalate the conflict. And this is what really scares uh, people from the service organizations that work with victims of domestic violence. And for that reason, we understood that we need to create a tool which would be absolutely autonomous. And one of our researchers uh, from the great team, he really did the tool, the software, which can be installed onto the Raspberry Pi device or any other Linux-based device. And this device would serve as a Wi-Fi router. And the victim's phone would get connected to this Wi-Fi router. And the tiny check tool would then scan the outgoing traffic from the victim's device in order to understand if the let's say, the smartphone of the victims, uh, get connected to the stockware uh, command and control servers. If it does, then it means that yes, gotcha, you have the stockware installed. The thing with this tiny check uh, is that it can be and should be used with the NGO or inside the NGO only. Because in some cases, if for example, somebody would see, yes, I have the stockware installed and they have not normal relations in their family, they can behave strangely and that again may escalate uh, the conflict. So that's why there is a need to have representative of the uh, service organization uh, together with victim or survivor and they would help them to have the escape plan to have this safety plan at hand and to deal with this situation. Why should businesses consider getting involved with public-private partnerships? The NGOs and corporate organizations are really different and this should be used as a benefit. So together they can do interesting things. And that's why I would say that when you are working on alliances or coalitions, you should look for a partner which has absolutely different expertise rather than you, so that together you would create like amplified solution, amplified service. Can you please share with us some professional tips and tricks? I hear oftenly, okay, so 
you have the collision, like you work with such a great topic, so let's do another collision. But I would say this is not the really correct approach because the coalition against Talkaware was initiated because there was external request to it, because there was the issue with which we had to deal. But in case if you would like to artificially create the problem and artificially solve it, it would not work. Secondly, you need to understand that it all takes lots of time and resources. As an example, we launched the No More Ransom project five years ago, and it is still a running project. It still requires some resources. The Collision Against Talkover uh, was launched almost two years ago, uh, and I would say it is still at the very initial stage. And finally, uh, there is an issue of directly connecting the result of your work with business results, with business itself. Because working on the social issues, it doesn't bring you money, it doesn't bring corporate organizations any profit, I would say, but I would say direct profit. So people from business, they need to understand it. And in order to explain it to them, you need to spend lots of time to have the internal PR uh, of the project. And for that, you also need some time. For that, you also need some resources and some strengths and some reputation to explain it to them, to prove that it's needed to the organization.